tell people how Jesus came into your heart and how he saved your soul. That's, that's the, the most honest, sincere thing you can tell people. Just tell them how you got saved. And let the Holy Spirit convict you. Let me ask you this morning. There may be somebody here today that's under conviction. I may not know it. Your husband may not know it. Your wife may not know it. Mom or dad may not know it. You see, God deals with every one of us personally. There may be someone here this, this morning that the Holy Spirit's been speaking to your heart and you've covered that up and you've not let anybody else see in there, but God has God sees in there and you're under conviction and you need to you need to surrender to that conviction. You need to obey the voice of God in your heart. Otherwise, you harden your heart. Otherwise, you let Satan have... And you know what happens when you harden your heart? You let Satan have more of your life than he had before. Think about that for a moment. When you push God out, when the Lord wants to come in, you push Him out. You're opening a door bigger. You're opening that door wider and letting, and letting Satan have more of his way and more of his will in your life. That's dangerous, folks. see, when people hear the gospel, and here's the gospel simply this, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried three days and three nights according to the scripture, and he arose the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. You see, when you hear the gospel, you can no longer be in darkness. You have to you have to do something. You have to either accept Christ as your Savior or you have to reject Him as your Savior. God's Holy Spirit speak to people, speaks to people's lives. The Apostle Paul said in Acts the ninth chapter, you see, Saul never had any peace after he saw Stephen stone. In Acts the ninth chapter, verse 5, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? This is on the road to Damascus whenever he was saved. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. See, Saul was under conviction. And after, and after he saw Stephen stone, God was beginning to change his life, and he never had peace, real peace, in his heart after that. He had come face to face with the truth. Different people react differently to the truth. Some people accept it. Some people fight against it. Some people will even get angry at you if you tell them the truth. They don't want to hear the truth, and they'll get angry at you. The council got angry at Stephen when he preached the truth. They got angry. They killed him. They stoned him to death. But Saul's life began to be changed. You know, if you're under conviction this morning, God has been speaking to your heart. Let me tell you how you feel. Most of the time, you can forget about Jesus. Or you can busy yourself with your job, or, or maybe it's playing ball, or maybe it's even arguing with somebody. And most of the time, you can forget about Jesus, and you can put your mind on other things, but there's always that time, isn't there? There's always that time when the Holy Spirit comes back and says, you're lost. Most of the time, you're happy to be religious. Well, I have my religion. I know what I, I, know what I believe, and, and nobody's going to change my mind, and nobody's going to tell me any different, and, and I know I'm right, and I'm happy. Now. Most of the time, that works. Until the Holy Spirit comes along and says, wait a minute. You don't have peace in your heart. You know. You know something wrong. Most of the time, you can live the way you want to. People do that all the time. The Holy Spirit speaks to their heart. They hear a sermon. They, they may hear it on TV or they may hear it on the radio. Or they may go to church and they, they hear the sermon and they are convicted of, of what they're doing of sin, but they put they put God off. They, 
the, they let the devil tell them, do it tomorrow, do it tomorrow. And they go out and they get their mind off it. Most of the time you can go on doing what you want to do. But you don't have peace in that. Let me tell you something. You never will. You see, this man saw knew the Bible. He knew the Old Testament. He was an expert in the Old Testament. This man saw. He was he was he was involved in his religion. He he worked at his religion. He was doing the best he could. He thought he was doing the right thing. But once he saw Stephen Stone, he never had peace in his heart again. You say, preacher, how do you know that? How can you stand up there this morning and how can you tell us how we feel if we've never been saved or if we're if we're fighting against something against God's will in our life? How can you say that? Because I've been through it. And you know the only the only answer to that is to give in to the Lord. And when you give in to the Lord, things change. God change your life. I had a man in our church one time in southeast Missouri. I heard him give his testimony many times. He had a wonderful wife. Two fine children. I didn't know him when he was unsaved. But I heard him give his testimony many times. He and his wife always sat together. And I've, heard, I've seen him stand with tears in his eyes saying if it wasn't for Hazel I wouldn't be a Christian. He said, you know, we got, we got married. He said, I wasn't a Christian. I had no intention of being a Christian. I was happy for her. If she wanted to be a Christian, that was okay. It didn't matter to me if she wanted to be a Christian. That was all right. But he said, I had no intention of being a Christian. And she said, he said she never badgered me one time about being saved. She just went about her life and he said, I began to see that there was something special inside of her that I couldn't deny. And I knew I didn't have it. You see, he had no peace. Once you once you've come face to face with the truth and you deny it, you don't have it. He saw her life day in and day out. He said, I used to do things to kind of provoke her. I used to try to get her upset and get her, get her not to be a Christian. And I'm sure at times she got upset with him. But he never did see her at a time when she, when she blew her testimony. He never did see her at a time when she wasn't saved a Christian. She didn't act like it. 